Alrighty then, boys and girls of oceanography, as promised, finally, here is a custom tailored video for your needs, explaining the things that we're not quite knowing yet about the plate tectonics, which is okay, because you've probably never been uh, told to associate all these things together, but now you will, so now you will. So, uh, as you can see in the picture behind me, uh, plate tectonics, all the plate boundaries, let's get on into it. We're going to start by talking about the uh, divergence, not the movie, but the boundary. These are often called the pull-apart faults, which makes sense because they're pulling apart. And as you know, it's generating new lithospheric and lithospherians. Hold on, I have to fix this light. Okay. Now that's much more blinding on me. Must be good then. Uh, keep in mind that when we're talking about making that new uh, crust on top of the earth, we're not just talking about crust. Sometimes we'll say crust, but really we mean the crust and that whole rigid mantle up in behind it, which is a very important distinction. Now that area... Now that new uh, area that's called the Rift Valley because it sort of pulls out, makes this big hull. A good example is the Mid-Ocean Ridge, which has these two big old mountains with a big old valley in the middle, comes apart at the spreading center. So the question is, we know all that and that makes sense, but what happens when that magma coming up through that big hole gets close to the surface? So here's an animation that pretty much shows what happens when the magma is getting up close to the surface. You can see the uh, convection currents pulling these two plates apart using those uh, mechanisms that we learned about in the lab. And you get some melting right up in here, but then the question is, what's going to happen here? What's going to happen over here? I mean, obviously, right here is a big old volcano, but what about over on the sides? Over on the sides, you actually get these things called seamounts, which uh, here's a picture. You can actually see some of the seamounts here behind me. They look like big old, well, this probably just looks like big old piles of rock, they're not just big old piles of rock, these are underwater volcanoes. So here is actually a 3D bathymetry model. You can actually see it's got this big long ridge, but you see these big areas like here. And maybe the green will show better on the black and green over here. And then this big one over here right behind me. These are actually showing us, these are actually showing us uh, these different kinds of plate boundaries. enough of that light and it's a lies today. Right, so you can actually see that this is raised area where magma is coming up through the surface creating an active volcano. So right here, the red, yeah, that's the lava spewing on out of that one and probably out of that one and maybe out of that one right there. And when it settles, it makes this big ridge-like shape. Now from time to time, you're going to see ones that look like this one. It's sort of like, you know, you're seeing out here, you're seeing out spewing out the lava. There it is. But you see, this one is flat on top. So what happens, just like a plateau, you've got these old volcanoes that are no longer active. They've moved far enough away from the magma coming to the surface that the erosion actually just flattens them off over time. And these are called table mounts because they're flat like a table. In addition to that, a little bit farther out from your sea mounts, but maybe not quite as far out as the deep sea uh, table mounts, you'll actually get some deep sea vents, some hydrothermal vents. And there's a large amount of pressure because we're at the bottom of the ocean. So even though you have uh, warm water vents, white smokers that range up to 350 degrees Celsius, which is over 665 degrees Fahrenheit, by the way, and black smokers that get even hotter, when they're spewing up this smoke, it's not actually smoke and it's not even steam, it's liquid water. The pressure down at the bottom of the ocean is so great that even though the temperatures well exceed the boiling point of water, it actually stays in liquid form and just spews up this really hot water. And the reason why the warm water vents you can't see anything is that water, I mean, 30 degrees Celsius, that's barely your body temperature. So that's, you know, that's just a nice spa day, I guess. The white and black smokers actually change color because the water gets so hot that it actually raises the solubility of water enough that it can dissolve particles of rock. 
So the white smokers are white because of the different particles of rock that are dissolved in it, and the black smokers are black because of the different particles of rock that are dissolved in that. The white ones tend to have more felsic rock and minerals, and the black one actually gets these heavier magnesium-based and sulfide-based rocks called metal sulfides that actually pile up. The water spews up, here it is water, black smoker, it's still just water, it actually goes up, and then the particulates come out of the solution once the water has gone farther away from the heated area, fall back down, and pile up just like uh, the volcanoes, just like the seamounts use a set of rock there in like large deposits of metal. Now this happens in an area where you're very close to the surface, but it doesn't reach the surface. You see you've got this magma that's probably cracked and split off the side. If it came to the surface, so rock would be coming out. This is water coming out. So what actually happens is it comes up close enough to the surface that we're in areas where the seawater has actually infiltrated the basalt of the sea floor. So it's slipped in there in between the cracks real sneaky-like. And when it gets in there, it gets superheated. It doesn't actually touch the magma because then it would turn into rock and cool the magma. But it gets close to it, superheats the water, and it actually blows a big hole, the cow, right through the ocean floor. Very, very similar to the Yellowstone geyser. And so generally, where all these things fall is very important. So you have your uh, spreading center, your divergent boundary right here. This is where filthy hot magma will be pouring up to the surface, turning into lava. I'm just showing you here is the uh, lithosphere, here is the convecting asthenosphere, just to give you a little bit of a perspective. And then you can see up here that very close to it you get seamounts. Some of them may actually big, be big enough to form islands. This is how Iceland is a thing because of that divergent spreading center right there. It's so fast spreading that enough magma has come up and turned into lava to become a whole island in the middle of the Atlantic, not so much. And then over here you've got these uh, table mounts and probably interspersed in here and in here and in here and anywhere where it hasn't reached the surface and it's still warm, you're going to get your deep sea vents. Remember, these volcanoes, your sea mounts, are active. Out uh, here on the sides, your table mounts are old volcanoes that are no longer active and have been eroded off the top. Uh, as you can see here, you get a pretty symmetrical view of the ocean floor and at your spreading centers. Here's a picture, underwater bathymetry. You can see here is the ridge right up in the middle where all the lava has been coming up. And then you see off to the side again, uh, sea mounts, table mounts off further. Here's a nice picture showing the mid-Atlantic ridge. This one will probably have to get in there without me in front of it. But you can see you've got, uh, again, up the middle, your big spreading channel. There's our divergent boundary. You can see off to the sides, you get all these really, really huge underwater sea mounts, table mounts, all kinds of uh, hills and whatnot over here, probably some deep shade van stuff like that. Now before we get too much farther, it's worth mentioning that there is a difference between a rise and a ridge. Now a rise is very, very smooth. It's a very quick spreading. Remember, these things don't spread like all the time, but they do sort of like And so if you have these two uh, plates, that are moving away from each other. And they're moving so really quickly, every time they move, they're going to spray up more lava, like murk splash, murk splash, murk splash, murk splash. And as a result, it's going to pile up here and be taller and then slowly be eroded as you move away. And so as a result, when you have your mid-ocean rises, they tend to be much more smooth and not quite as steep. It's a faster spreading. So it's smoother. Just remember, when you're on a date, the people that usually try to move really fast, they usually be the ones that are really smooth. And then you remember that the fast rise is smooth. Good example, Pacific rise, that divergent boundary is moving real fast. In contrast to that, you have the ridges, which have these plates that are spreading out from each other. But they're moving a lot more slowly. They're kind of like... And every time that they uh, some more magma piles up. And then remember, if the magma piled up here, that whole pile is going to get moved when the plate is moved, too. And so as a result, you end up getting this much more craggy 
going on. Which usually kind of gets smoothed over, but it tends to be a lot rougher and bumpier. So the ridges, they're more slow, they're kind of pokey like the tortoise, which usually has a really bumpy shell. So there's the difference between ridge and rise, for those of you that are wondering. Now anytime you've got this spreading center in the middle, you're going to have it dipping down with some convergence on the side. So let's talk about convergent boundaries there, children. Which is the convergent boundaries? The type of crust really matters here. Not as much with your divergent boundary. With your convergent boundaries, though, it matters a whole lot. And so if you've got a continent crust, which is, again, much bigger because it's less dense. So here's our continental crust. Here's our oceanic crust. As the two plates move towards each other, the oceanic plate being much, much thinner but denser, this is more matter packed in this space than up here. Well, then, or maybe not more matter, but it's more tightly packed. It dives down, and as it dives down, it gets warmer and warmer because down here in the atmosphere is very hot. So it gets really melty, and then when it gets melty, this rock becomes molten, its density decreases, and it rises up to the surface as shown here, making delicious volcano. See, there it is. Oh, volcano. Ah. Volcano. And so this area here, this is what this is what's known as that subduction zone, right here where the uh, plates are going down. If this is a continental, this is an oceanic plate, then this structure right here, that deep dip there, that's our deep sea trench. You need to know that that's called a deep sea trench. When it goes down there, you get volcanoes inland, like they're showing right here. Now you could also have two oceanic plates coming together, and like the kids told us in the presentation, whichever one is older will be more compacted because, you know, it's got the ocean on top of it, and it will subduct down, creating an even deeper deep sea trench right here, like the Marianas Trench. Uh, yeah, that's over here. The Tonga Trench, same thing, two oceanic plates, bumping uglies, getting on down there. And again, this plate that is subducted will be destroyed, and by destroyed, we melt it turn into volcanoes that spew all up here and can tend to make volcanoes, even volcanoes that reach the surface like volcanic islands like, uh, like the Tonga Islands or the Marianas Islands. Any place you have these really uh, awesomely deep, deep sea trenches, you also tend to get islands. And then there's also two continental plates coming together. With the two continental plates, uh, the subduction happened a very long time ago, back at once upon a time when there used to be an ocean in between here. So because these two plates are thicker and having similar densities, when they smash up into each other, there tends to be a lot of folding and a lot of uplifting, generating beautiful mountains. Well, actually, you know, lands. But eventually, one will actually tend to topple and fall on top of the other one, creating these really dramatic uh, uplifts like the Andes or uh, the Himalayas and all of the big, beautiful mountains of the world. Again, those are our convergent boundaries. You guys have a pretty good handle on those, but it's worth mentioning, uh, don't forget that you've got all this kind of volcanic things happening anytime there's subduction. And anytime you have those volcanic things happening, you're going to get volcanoes, but you also have a tendency, if it's underneath like ocean, ocean, you get some deep sea vents, table mounts moved farther off, that whole uh, deal. So all those uh, different volcanic features are still in play anytime we talk about volcanism. I mean the whole uh, gambit. Transform boundaries, you guys did pretty well with these. Uh, there's oceanic and continental, and those are the only types. If it involves an oceanic plate, it's oceanic, period. If it involves only continental plates, then we call it continental, like, uh, well, you'll see in a minute. Now what's really fun is, like the group said, these do always occur between your mid-ocean ridges. Remember, you've got that spreading center, it's spreading, it's like I'm spreading. But because the Earth is round, it can't just spread linearly, it kind of jostles and jeers to the side, and you get these different fracture zones. Right, like they're showing here, you've got your, uh, here's your ridge, and you can see it's been offset to the side because the uh, plate has moved, well this one's moved this way, and this one appears to have moved as that's way, showing you, you know, your transform faulting, your transform boundaries. But it's not just here, and it's not just here. You also have transform faulting up here. Anytime you have more than two plates, 
that come together, that form a junction, you're going to have a transformed boundary. Anytime there's three or more plates slammed into each other, over here, there's actually four plates with potentially a fifth plate that's totally subducted underneath the Earth over in here. John Tuzo Wilson discovered the whole transformed boundary, and so he came up with this idea and has further, you know, published and gone on and on. Tuzo Wilson, John Tuzo Wilson. His name's coming up again uh, in a couple videos, so be on the lookout. So at this point, you should be feeling pretty good about your transform, your convergent, and your divergent boundaries. Keep in mind, here is a map of the Earth's plate boundaries. And as you can see, you've got all these different spreading centers, like here and here. And look at the transform faulting that's occurring. You get spreading centers here. Here's our Atlantic Ocean or Mid-Ocean Ridge over there. Remember, when it comes over in here, then you get convergent boundaries, which is why you have all these volcanoes over here, and all these volcanoes over here, and all those earthquakes that go with it. Anytime these two plates are grinding on each other, there's going to be earthquakes, children. Earthquakes! Not just that transform. So, uh, that is the extension for plate tectonics. Hopefully you learned something a little bit new. And since it's the end of the video, down in the links in the description, there will be a link for Moodle Forum. You will do Moodling, and it will be joyous. Thanks for watching, everyone.